Uh, good afternoon. We'll um, just read our statement that we put out earlier so that you've got some uh, footage of that, and then we're happy to take any questions. Um, Goris Garman has been the leading voice in Parliament for human rights, for truly independent foreign policy, and for electoral reform for six years now. Her political achievements are significant. Green MPs are expected to maintain high standards of public behaviour. It is clear to us that Ms Gardaman is in a state of extreme distress. She has taken responsibility and she has apologised. We support the decision that she has made to resign. We are deeply sorry to see Ms Gardaman leave under these circumstances and we do wish her all the very best for her future. Ms Gardaman has worked tirelessly on behalf of her communities. Nothing detracts from this work and we know that she will continue to represent uh, and support those communities in the future. We cannot comment on the details of allegations whilst police investigations are ongoing. The Green Party is a movement of thousands of people who are working tirelessly for people and for planet, and that work continues. Um, we're happy to take any uh, questions. Has Scotty's been reimbursed, or have the items been returned allegedly and so on? Uh, we don't um, have uh, details of that. Um, and that is a matter for Ms Gardaman and for Scotties. Over here, over here. Do you, do you here. think the Greens need to review how it supports and selects its MPs given Ms Gardaman is the second MP who has been forced to resign within the last year? The Greens have a high quality um, and very robust selection process. Um, it is also understandable that all MPs across all political parties are still human uh, when they come into politics. Uh, we will continue to support Golries through a really distressing time that she is having at the moment, and that is a Green Party responsibility also. How is Golries at the moment? Clearly distressed. Um, we know that this is the right decision for her to apologise and to resign from Parliament for her well-being, for her to be, be able to focus, and our responsibility is to make sure she has the support she is needed and to continue to give her aroha and compassion. Maruai, can I just get that into the Māori post Me mihi ki a goal i wā he pauri, uh, mō ana hoa mahi, mō te kōkas, mō te rōpū uh, kākāriki. Ko te mea nui, me mihi aroha ki a ia, ki tōna whānau, ki ona hapuri, uh, i tōna kaha tū. Mo ngā kaupapa e pāna ki e ngā community e ngā hapuri, nō reira tēnei te mihi aroha ki a ia. Why did it take this long to get to this conclusion and to sort of act on these allegations? Um, I mean, Gauri's only got back to the country over the course of the weekend, um, and so, um, you know, it's, it's kind of just taken the time uh, that, it's, that it's taken. Um, ultimately, there is still an open police investigation, uh, and so you know that's that's kind of a factor here. How cooperative has she been throughout this process? Very. Do you think that fronting a little bit earlier, though, in person, would have saved <clears> her from <throat> being in the headlines every single day, when she's clearly not well? We, as co-leaders, James and I, really needed to seek um, clarity and understand the allegations. Uh, she was overseas, and I think people can understand how important it is to have face-to-face -face and in-person conversations with uh, such allegations. Um, also to allow her to have the support that she needs um, to be able to discuss those allegations. And once uh, we were advised and took some time to work out our, our plan and course of attack and appropriate action, uh, Ms. Garaman returned at the earliest possible convenience. Um, I'm going to go over here. So, um, Boris has a third allegation leading from October and says that she has um, mental health. Were you aware of it leading back to October? And have you been, how, how does the Green, Green Party support its MPs with mental health? Oh, so uh, you're asking if we are aware of mental health, not if we are aware of the allegations? Um, were you aware of the allegations leading back to October? No. And um, because she's uh, Gowra said about mental health, um, were you aware that she was suffering from that? Or how does the Green Party support that? Mental health? Yeah, it's a really important question for all political parties, uh, particularly 
we have seen the conversation over the past years, especially, um, about the particular the particular treatment of women with public profiles, uh, and in addition, the particular treatment of women of colour with public profiles. It is incumbent on all political parties and the parliamentary system to be able to support everyone um, under the pressures of political profiles, and the Greens certainly um, have always taken that seriously to make sure that there are avenues for um, MPs feeling that stress to be able to communicate and seek help. Carry on. That's a fair question. The portfolio reshuffle will absolutely come in due course. Uh, James and I have yet to have those conversations today, but there will be some, likely be some interim uh, portfolio shuffles in the meantime, and then we'll all let you know when we've got the fuller reshuffle. Can I come behind here? Look, it wouldn't be appropriate for us to comment um, on, um, you know, the mental health condition of one of our colleagues. Um, we're not medical professionals. Um, uh, professional support is available to all of our MPs, and we do know that people do access them, and we encourage people to access that professional support. And how was the conversation in person with colleagues? Yep, so once she returned from overseas, yes, it was really important for us um, to meet in person. The, the actual details of that conversation I uh, won't be going into detail with, but it was, again, to seek clarification and um, allow her to be heard. Sorry. Oh, this, all of this um, is a sad day. I, I'm losing a friend and a colleague um, who I've been close to and have worked with for six years, both of us, James and I, sad for our caucus, um, and we are here to give aroha and hold her leadership in the portfolio work, the kaupapa work that she has often been a lone voice in, um, just want to acknowledge the strong uh, support for Palestinian communities and against the genocide that Golris has been a lead voice in, for example, alongside uh, human rights, improving our democratic and voting systems, uh, foreign policy. Um, we, we just have aroha and sadness for um, the value of her kaupapa and for her as a person, and she was a part of our team. What's the big blow to retailers who have been thinking we're struggling right now. What's your message to them after one of your MPs is alleged to be shopping? Yeah, first I do want to mihi to Scotties, who have been um, generously providing us with information and um, helping us to be clear about the allegations as much as they could, and then proactively kept coming back to want to provide and pass on information to us. And I really want to thank them for um, their generous communication, and really want to acknowledge the distress that Scotties um, and any other retailers through these incidents, through these allegations, are feeling right now. Um, we know and we expect uh, accountability. We know the public has every right to expect accountability from MPs, which is why we support and, and welcome Golris's apology and her decision for her well-being to resign. When did you say that meeting happened yesterday, is that right? Sorry, which meeting is that? that we met uh, at the earliest convenience when she returned over the weekend. Um, so the day that she returned, we were able to meet. And what day was that? It was on Saturday. Saturday, um, yeah. But yeah. we've had a number of conversations, yeah. obviously, over the course of the last few days. Yeah. Well, when did she actually leave the country? On the 28th of December. Of December. Mm. And just with her resignation, was she was that her idea or was there a conversation that you had where you thought that that was the best? That was her. This is her decision. This is her uh, being accountable, uh, apologising and wanting to do what's best for her, uh, for the party. <clears throat> Could you partay again to me in English? Uh, just, um, uh, was, was she forthcoming with her resignation or was that a conversation that you had? Na Gauri's te nei um, whakaro, na Gauri's te 
Nga Gauri's kaputa to tōna mihi, um, me tōna uh, haere atu uh, nō te whare pāre mata, uh, nōna tēnā, uh, nōna tana mihi, ki, ki ngā tangata o Aotearoa, ki te pāti kākāriki, nō reira me mihi kāti kakiaia, kei te tautoko māua, kei te tautoko uh, māua ko James um, e tōna whakaaro i tēnei wā. In her statement, she alludes to uh, work stresses. Are you able to shed some light on what, what work stresses you face? Yeah, look, I mean, I mean, obviously Parliament is a stressful place uh, kind of for anybody. Um, however, Gauri's herself has been subject to um, pretty much continuous uh, threats of sexual violence, um, physical violence, death threats since the day she was elected to Parliament. Um, and so she, that has added a, you know, a, a higher level of stress than is experienced by most um, members of, of Parliament. Um, and that has meant, for example, that um, there have been um, kind of police investigations into those threats almost the entire time uh, that she has been a member of Parliament. And so obviously, um, if you're living with that level of uh, threat um, in what is already uh, quite a stressful situation, then you know, there are going to be consequences for that. So I have uh, a lot of empathy um, for uh, you know, the fact that she has um, identified that, uh, you know, she is in a state of extreme mental distress. Um, you know, as Manama said, that's, you know, she's, she's taking accountability for mm -hmm. her actions and uh, seeking for an explanation and this is the best course for her in terms of recovery. And so with the benefit of hindsight, are you confident that everything throughout this process has been done appropriately? Um, you know, everyone will have uh, criticisms of um, how we've handled them. Um, I think that we have made the decisions that we have when we have, mm. based on the best information we mm. had available at the time, and it doesn't change the outcome. Mm. Uh, you know, ultimately, um, you know, Golri's uh, is taking accountability uh, for uh, her actions. Um, she's seeking um, medical help, and she is in a state of extreme distress. That is, those, that's kind of where we're at, um, and and we support her decision. I'm going to come to the back here, thank you. Um, is the party aware of any other allegations at this stage? Uh, there have been reports that all of the public saw. Uh, we did not know about those allegations. We were earlier advised that, that there might be more allegations to come, but that was um, just part of ordinary public um, information as well. We've seen other allegations reported on, but we had no previous knowledge of any other allegations. It's really important to note that, you know, the police, and we, you know, we are not in contact with the police. Yeah. It would not be appropriate for us to be in, in contact with the police, um, and so, you know, we are finding out about those uh, kind of allegations as they as they come to light. Yeah. 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 We, we have no um, knowledge of the of the any other allegations that you're referring to. So, you, you oh, is it the Welling Wellington? Wellington? Oh, one? no, we only found out about that yesterday. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's not surprising to you that it took until yesterday for an allegation that far back to make it to you. Well, again, it's it's a police investigation. Yeah. We we would not expect privileged access to that, mm. um, and so and, and in fact, it would be inappropriate uh, for us to have privileged access yeah. to that. Gauris is getting a lot of support mm. uh, from her you know, colleagues in the Green Caucus, uh, from um, other uh, Green Party members and so on. She's also getting a lot of support uh, from other communities that she's uh, well connected to. And of course, most importantly, she's got professional um, uh, support as well. Um, we, you know, have offered any support uh, that we can provide. Um, uh, ultimately, you know, it's kind of a matter for her to decide you know, how best to take up the offers of support that she's receiving. How we will continue to support Goal Rees is continue to 
ensure that she knows that our aroha and compassion, that we are holding that as, as colleagues, as friends, as women in politics, um, and that's really important to us. Um, there will also be other practical supports that will be appropriate, and we'll just continue to stay in contact to offer those. What would you have done to intervene earlier so that it wouldn't have escalated? Like, like being an MP, you know, the stresses and the nature of the job, but had you intervened earlier, maybe in October, like how, how can we prevent this from happening again with another MP falling um, subject to this? Oh, yeah, look, it's I, a I hypothetical. Don't think that you, yeah, it is, it is a hypothetical question, um, and... You know, every you know, I know you're kind of drawing a relationship to kind of other um, people in Parliament. Actually, each of those does kind of stand on their own, mm -hmm. um, and and the circumstances, you know, people are in are, are different. Um, so, um, you know, I think Parliament has improved over the course of the last few years in terms of making support available. Yeah. We strongly encourage um, our MPs and our staff. Uh, to access um, professional support, um, at, you know, if they if they feel that uh, they need it, um, and we will continue to do so. so. Where do you draw the line between someone who's got mental health issues and someone who's just making bad decisions? Mm. Mm. Well, that is absolutely not the case mm. here. That's mm. really, really clear. And you know, Golris has said that she wants to take full accountability for her yeah. actions, uh, and in um, disclosing. Uh, kind of her mental health uh, issues, she's not looking for an excuse not here. She's all. trying to sort of seek a reason uh, to explain um, her behaviour, not to justify it. And I think that's really, really important. I Why think. Was she unable to talk this through with her while she was still overseas? Mm. A really appropriate, I think, just ordinary folks across Aotearoa will understand it. It's really appropriate. For well, some conversations um, should only be face to face, should be in person, because um, that's that's the only way you can gather the whole vibe and wairua of of the nature of what's being discussed. And uh, also, as uh, I think, as people can appreciate, to have supports um, available to people in those discussions as well. It sounds like Gauris has had a tough time of things with the police investigations and. and Trolling and things. You say that you were supporting her at the time. Can you tell me what you were doing? Were you, were you, was the ball in her court to get help from you, or were you doing check-ins and things? No, we do. Um, and we, you know, as a caucus, we discuss these um, matters as well. Um, you know, we have uh, every month um, we have our staff and or senior staff and uh, MPs meet for a day um, to do kind of planning and you know those sort of issues are some of what we cover. Um, our MPs meet once a quarter um, over the, over a weekend um, and uh, a lot of the agenda is you know kind of devoted to those um, sort of conversations. Um, we work very closely with parliamentary security uh, and mm. with police um, and uh, and with IT uh, and and so on. Mm. So we you know we have been trying over the course of kind of like you know the ten years I've been an MP. You know I think we've been improving in terms of making sure that people have access to the support uh, that they need. Um, um, you know and uh, you know we don't have like I said we're not mental health professionals mm -hmm. um, and so you know we can't form anything other than a kind of a lay observer's assessment um, and it wouldn't be appropriate you know for us um, to uh, to make an assessment of someone's uh, mental health um, but we do know that MPs do access uh, mental health uh, services as part of their work and we would strongly encourage that to continue. Is there more that you think could have been done? It's 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 it, it's hard for us to answer. You know, yeah. It, it, it's, it's it's obviously really sad that it's gotten to this point. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, again, we don't have full information. Mm. Um, we you know, like I said, we're not um, mental health professionals. We don't have access to you know those kinds of conversations. Um, we're not the police. We don't have access to you know kind of any sort of information about any pattern of behaviour there. Um, and so, you know, we. We kind of work with each other and we support each other as best as best we can. That's but true. it is a very challenging work environment. You guys are losing a star, someone who's played a key role. Absolutely. 
How much damage has this done to the party? We're all very sad. Uh, our caucus, our colleague MPs, our party, her communities. Yeah, this is a loss. Let's let's not uh, make any bones about that. This is a big loss to the kaupapa, to the mahi, and just to a person um, who we who we loved. And so this this is a loss. Um, we will continue to uphold her her legacy in mahi, her portfolio areas, her areas that matter to us as the Green Party, not just to her those relationships with those communities. Um, we do what we can to carry on and honour um, her contribution to our kaupapa. Did you say um, I have, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, again, it's a confidential conversation. I'm not going to get into uh, the gist of it. Um, she's, um, you know, obviously very sad to, you know, at, at the set of circumstances here as well. She's ready to become a green well, she will become a Green MP. We, yeah. we welcome her. She's an amazing and experienced politician, and we absolutely welcome her um, and, of course, regret the sad circumstances um, that she is coming into the big house in, of Just course. Scotties, when did you see the security footage of that? So um, the security footage is part of the subject of, of the police mm -hmm. investigation, so we can't comment uh, specifically on... You know, issues to do with security footage or specific allegations or anything like that. I'm Have sorry. You seen it? We've seen some footage. Yeah. Um, we don't know the extent of the footage that's out there, but ultimately that is a matter for the police, not for us. Are you able to give us a bit of a clearer picture on the timeline from your guys' perspective when you first heard about it to now? Well, I mean, we've made that a couple of statements thing. around that. Um, we uh, understood that there, were, there was an allegation on the 27th of December. Um, the facts of the situation at that time were not clear, um, and so um, we contacted both uh, Ms Garman and Scotty just to try and understand it a little better. Um, and the facts remained kind of unclear, you know, for some time. Um, on the 5th, we, we learned about a second allegation. Again, um, because we're not the police, we don't have access to full information, uh, you know, it, it was unclear, but, you know, obviously... Uh, m more than one incident. So um, we took a few days at that point to sort of work out, you know, where to go from there, uh, recognising that, you know, we still uh, live by the principle that people are innocent until proven mm -hmm. guilty um, and that we are not the police and the police investigation had not concluded at that time. Um, so we felt that it would be best for her to stand aside from her portfolios whilst the investigation was ongoing. Um, then on the 10th, uh, it became kind of public knowledge, um, and um, you know here we are. Has she given you any kind of indication of what was going through her head when she was doing this stuff, or has she been doing this stuff? Those those conversations we will not be going into detail to and are, are private. Um, what's important today is she is apologising, she is taking responsibilities, she has tendered her resignation and we are in full support of that and um, offer her our love and support in an ongoing way as well. If she, she hadn't resigned, if she hadn't oh, that's a hypoth that's a hypothetical um, that no one can really answer. Um, the important the important court it all here today is she is taking responsibility, apologising, and we wish her the best on her recovery also. That won't be we won't be going into detail of those conversations and as uh, as we understand that is subject to a police investigation. I do just want to come back. Um, aware of what had happened before you two? So, sorry, could you repeat that? Were any um, Green Party colleagues aware of what had happened before the two of you were? You, by, what do you mean by what had happened? The, oh, by, by the allegations? Us. Uh, we put out a statement, we put out an initial statement um, that a Green representative has been uh, co uh, facilitating this on our behalf. So a Green representative um, has been communicating this to us, and as far as we're aware, it was just us, just us as co-leaders, um, that this was communicated to. Is it that's an MP or a staffer or...? A, a, a Green Party representative. Um, could we please get a comment on the Lanier Sooner Way Brown coming in and watching the stop 
Look, Celia is um, a very, very experienced politician. Um, she's won uh, seven, seven elections uh, during the course of her career, and of course two of those uh, as Mayor of Wellington. Wellington. Um, so she brings a, a long uh, history of um, public service. Uh, and a very practical understanding of the challenges that are faced in our urban environments, particularly mm. around you know transport and housing uh, and uh, and so on. So um, she'll be a great MP, and we're looking forward to having her on board. Now, I've um, particularly noted her ongoing priorities around tiriti justice, um, equality, making sure that everyone has what they need to live dignified lives. Uh, these are all kaupapa that are core to our to our heart and. So we welcome her and obviously regret the sad circumstances of her entry, but I know she'll, she's going to rock the place. Um, she's going to do her utmost best, especially um, to honour our colleague who we're losing today. On the delegation relating to Wellington and Wellington in October, since uh, you know, you've acknowledged that you only found out from media mm. uh, when that came yesterday, mm -hmm. after Ms Graham's conversation, with, with the two of you. Mm -hmm. you know, are you disappointed that you didn't bring that up, that there was a, a potential for other incidents to come? Well, to I, I, again, um, you know, we can't comment on uh, what allegations are out there that we kind of no, I, either we knew about didn't, or didn't know about. But, but that would be putting a judgment on the allegations, and we just simply cannot do that. And this is a judgment on her making it, making it known to you that. No, it's a judgment on whether the allegations have any truth to them and we are not in a position to be able to qualify that at all. But she didn't raise those, the, the potential Look, that there would be others. What, are what, you disappointed? What we're disappointed about is the way that, you know, it, it, that this is um, the circumstances that she finds herself in, right? So um, it is, this is really unfortunate. Um, and it's important to us uh, that she takes accountability for her actions and that she uh, um, gets uh, the support that, that she needs. Um, and, uh, you know, we hope that it, it gets resolved as, as fast as it can. Um, you know, you can ask lots of questions about, you know, what ifs and if this and so on and so forth. We're not terribly interested in that. Um, you know, it, it, Things have but gone is, she really being, is she really being up front it's and, and uh, you're yeah. admitting to these things that she, she hasn't but told you, you about you, a possible allegations? But don't, you, it's, not, it's not our, we, we don't want to do the police's job mm, here. We right? cannot. And, no. and, and um, ultimately, you know, that is a matter for, what, what the allegations are is a matter for the police yeah. uh, to, to investigate. Um, what's important, again, is that she is taking responsibility um, and... Uh, she but is how, how is this taking responsibility if she, if she hasn't, if she hasn't question, been upfront about the potential for more instances? And uh, nobody knows, nobody can say whether she is or isn't being upfront about any other instances or allegations. That is for the police to answer, certainly not James and I. Yeah. Can I just have one more question in terms of going forward? Um, when is the portfolio reshuffling? Oh, look, <laughs> we, this is kind of too early to say. Mm. Um, but obviously Parliament doesn't resume until the 30th. Uh, of January, January. Um, so uh, you know we kind of need to let the dust settle a wee bit here, uh, and then we'll sit down and kind of work out uh, what we need what we need to do from here. So you won't be starting until then, or do you have a plan? By then? Well, we look. We're kind of dealing with the resignation today. Um, we will get to that. Mm, we will. Um, and uh, um, Celia, the earliest practical point that she can be sworn in is on the first sitting day, on the 30th of January. Um, we haven't even had that conversation about when, when that could occur. So, you know, all of all of the kind of logistical things that need to happen from this point on... We haven't had we, that conversation. We will handle them um, in good time. I guess it's, it's likely comparing other like situations where there's been change of MPs across any party, it's likely there'll be some interim uh, portfolio holders, and then the more permanent work of portfolio reshuffle will happen in due course. All right, thanks. Everyone. Thank you very much. Cheers. Appreciate that.